Welcome, my name is Poor Nelson with Random Art Attack, and today we're going to be basically making a tiled roof texture that you see right here within Substance Designer. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the details to get this exact replica of this material, but rather instead, we're going to basically look at bite-sized bullet points of the important things. How to make basically the parallax um, looking material in the viewport there, how to make the tiles that look like this. Here, let me click that. That look like that how to make basically cracks on the different tiles, um, how to dif do different types of roughness within the grooves, uh, different types of masking, all these basically really important things I'm gonna be looking at. But the coloring in general, we aren't gonna talk about a ton. I have provided for all of my Patreon supporters of a silver tier or higher this material for free, not for free, for supporters, excuse me. Um, and so if you want to, you can go in and kind of just dig apart and look at this in more depth. And so let's go ahead and go to the uh, a new package here. I want to show you my workflow, how to set this up, how to go ahead and get a height material that actually works. And so I'm just going to create a, a noise. Ooh, I don't want to sell noise. <laughs> That's not what I want. So just typing in spacebar noise, just got a cloud, and then spacebar normal. I'm going to add this to my normal map, basically. Not basically, I am adding this to my normal map. And you can start to see it, but you can see it hasn't added any height. It's just basically um, looking as a flat normal map. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit spacebar, go ahead and uh, type in output, then click this button there and type in, not type in, select height. Now as I s drag this in, so black and white for height, you don't see anything change. And that's because this isn't attached to the material. So go ahead and right click viewport height and you can see that it starts to affect it. If you want to be more intense, you go to materials default and you just go through these and then hit tessellation and you can scale this up or down. I find scaling up too high starts to cause some weird artifacts. Scan it too low, you can't see it. So about 0.46 is about what I usually do. And so it took me about three years to realize that this functionality was in Substance Designer and all of my substances were looking really flat. And so this, this helps me see it a lot better. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and add a cloud and then a gradient map attached to this. So I'm going to basically make a color and I'm going to attach that to the color. And then I start to, because it helps me see the color a little bit more as I'm working with the heights instead of just this flat black or flat gray or flat whatever. So change it to the colors you want on the gradient map. So I'm doing kind of a brown and a green. And you can kind of scale this up and down to get different effects. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to look for a nice little blend. A pearl and noise usually works better for this. Uh, I'm just going to change the green down a bit so it's not so strong. <laughs> That's kind of an ugly color, but it's going to help me see it as I as I work with the different height maps. The last thing I do is a uniform uniform color, change it to grayscale, and change it up pretty high. Ew, not that high. That's too matte. And I'm adding this to my roughness. I don't like it so shiny that I just can't see anything. Something like that, where it's like, I can see the details in the height. I really do like that. Okay. And then by default, I like um, the meta metallic to be zero, unless I'm working with a metal, right? So I'm just gonna add a height map that is pure black for metal. And, and you don't really have to do that because the default is zero me metallic. Um, and one last really cool trick that I like to do is I like to add a blend node where I can just basically take this, here, let me show you. So I'm gonna put a shape thing, change this shape down to a paraboloid. And so instead of having to drag this into the normal map and drag this into the height map, and then as I change this, do that over and over again, I like to do a blend node and then put the blend node into, uh, put my height map into that put that into the normal and put that into the height. That way as it changes, I can just basically drag that into the blend thing and I don't have to drag it into four different things every single time and try and find where those are at. So right now I have this paraboloid and I'm going to go ahead and do a tile generator and I'm going to add that paraboloid in. That's a hard word to say, paraboloid. Right now you can see that's not affecting it. So you scroll down to where it says pattern type. I'm going to do image input Global offset, that's not what I want, just offset. And you want this 0.5. This is gonna give you the perfect tiling where it's offset almost 50, 50%. 50 
I'm going to change the scale quite a bit so it goes up like that. And I'm getting this cool little like star within a circle pattern. Scroll all the way down to blending mode and change this to max. This is the biggest thing for trying to get tiled roof. It will take the lightest color and make that go above the darker colors. And so you can play around with this and get some really cool effects. So now what I want to do is go ahead and add a gradient map. Gradient linear, excuse me. Go down to 180 degrees. So it flips it so the dark's on top. Blend these two. Blend this paraboloid with the gradient map. And then do multiply. So the top's dark and the bottom's light. Now as I add this in, you can see that starts to blend it a lot better because now as these overlap because the size is greater than one, I can increase the size even more. You can see it's almost looking like a tile. Not quite because it's a little too dark. So let's go ahead and drag that in there. And you can see that as it's being applied. And, and so that's one of the reasons I, I have that blend mode there. So I can just drag it and it's cool. So let's go ahead and add a gradient map onto this paraboloid. I think every time I say paraboloid, I should get like a dollar. <laughs> that's so hard to say paraboloid. Anyways, I have this gradient map. I changed it up so it's brighter. And now you can see that it starts to um, get a, a tiled pattern like a roof a lot better. I'd want to change the scale, uh, not of the paraboloid. If I change this, you can see it works okay, but it starts to go in at the tops, unlike roof where it's just gonna be straight. So I don't want rounding right there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead, don't change that, you ch keep that as one. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, just leave that as one. Don't change the say, size of your paraboloid. Rather, instead, change the scale like this. And then you can change the X size of the paraboloid to be the scale that you want. And you get this really good looking tile. So hopefully that's about the third thing that we've learned so far, how to set up, how to get the, the parallax working, and how to get the tiles. Now we're going to be talking about how to create cracks within these tiles. So what I'm going to do, let me just go ahead and move this. I Tiny workspace. I'm going to go ahead and add a tile generator. Tile generators are awesome at creating random patterns. So here I have this. I'm going to go down to the shape. You do not want brick because that has anti-aliasing. You want disc. And then you want to change the size way, 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 way down. So it's like little pin pinpoints. Um, position random. No, that's, yeah, yeah, that's what we want. Position random. So it kind of looks like stars. And then number, I'm going to change that to number like 34, 34. It doesn't matter. And then luminance, you want this to be changed as well so that there's darks and there's lights. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a distance modifier. What that does, and I'm going to put it into the top of the bottom, it basically, oh, change that to, yeah, just click that button right there. And you can crank it up. As you go up, it basically extends the color. And so as the color meets another color, it stops. And so with these random points, it's going to create this really cool random effect. So like this. So it's kind of like a cell pattern, but with more randomness because you can change the seed and you can change stuff like that. And you can, you can change the size by changing the number of tiles as well. Uh, we then hook that up into an edge detect. I find that just crank this down to one and then zero gives you the best results. The tolerance, that's not going to really matter because it's just flat. Okay. And as you can see, that's pretty good looking cracks. We want to add some warp to this. But that is the bread and butter of how to make cracks. So warp, drag that in. You want a noise. So I like to do Perlin noise zoom because then I can change the scale to get it uh, th the size I want. Change the intensity of the warp down quite a bit. And there you go. That's looking great. Now watch this. I can just take this, put this into the blend. And bada bing, bada boom, I don't have to try and change a lot of different things just to look at the normal map. Um, I don't like how there's no variation to the height. It's just all the same depth. So I'm going to go ahead and do a noise clouds. And then I'm going to do blend. I'm going to drag those. I'm going to go ahead and drag that up, drag that up, and then go ahead and change it to the blend mode. Oh, let's switch this actually. Um, change the blend mode down to lighten. And now you can see we're getting variations to the, the different height of the cracks. So let's drag and drop that into the, the, the blend node there. 
and it's looking a lot better. Now, if I want to be zero cracks at some points, you can do gradient map, change that to grayscale, crank that up. And so, oh, I didn't change it to grayscale. There we go. Now you can see that there's actually some places that are just pure white and some places that are um, that have the cracks coming through. That's how I do cracks. It gives you very good results. And I do it once, and then I basically save off a new graph with that, and I just drag and drop it into my different um, files. But I want to show you that because it's good to see how to construct it. Now I'm going to blend these two. I only want to blend it there at the tips. And so how I do that is I go ahead and um, put that on the bottom, put this in the top. And then I'm going to do a threshold to get the blending so it's going to be what I want to be. So you can't see anything there. So gradient, gradient map again. We use this a lot. Go ahead and crank up the black so that only the tips are showing. Because then if I put that into the third node of the blend, that's what's going to blend. Change that to grayscale. Oh, delete that. There we go. And so now you can see it's only doing the cracks. But you'll see a few problems as I pull this into the blend. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but where those tips are, it's almost like this rough kind of uh, contrast. So playing around with this, there you go. You can see it a lot better. And so we don't want that. And so there's a lot of different ways to get rid of this. I'll, I'll show you a couple wrong ways. So as I just change the order, you can see that that's not working. We have this on copy. And copy basically takes the top thing and then just layers it over based on the blend. And so we don't want to layer it over. We want it to somehow um, mix in a different way. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cracks on top. And I'm going to put the tiles. I'm going to change it to multiply. And that gives you the perfect blending. Okay. So it takes that shape right there. And it basically, the, the top layer ignores everything that's black. And then the multiply will ignore everything that's white and just layer on the, the dark layers. That was probably poorly explained anyways. <laughs> We're going to go forward. Uh, the more you play with that, the, the better you'll understand that. So uh, cracks on top, tiles on bottom, multiply, have a mask is, is the workflow. And you can change the effectiveness of the cracks um, by changing the gradient map as well as what I was doing right there. I'm going to go ahead and do a slope blur to give the, the tiles a little bit of a texture. So go ahead and do Perlin noise zoom again. I love this thing. And then you change this to min, change this down a lot, change the samples down. Ooh. So I'm going to go ahead and change the distance of the Perlin noise. And you can see, like increasing it, it's, it's doing this weird thing. We'll work with that. So go back to the slope blur, change the intensity down a lot, like 0.01. And it's starting to add a little character along the edges there. Um, 0 0.03, let's look at what that looks like. So drag that into the blend file again. And it's too much. Um, I don't want it to look like it's, you know, super old. So I'm going to do 0 0.01 for the intensity of the slope blur. And that's looking good. Like it's giving, it's giving the, enough character to these tiles that they don't just look uniformed. The cracks are looking good. And now... You can see that we have the tiles basically done, except um, it's too flat. So we're going to do ambient occlusion, drag in the height map. So again, the blend file is doing a lot of heavy lifting that we did right from the start. I'm going to drag down the spreading. Uh, just checking to see if I use the right ambient occlusion. There's two. I'm pretty sure the first one was correct. Let's check this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's gross. So, so the first ambient occlusion. Going to move this down. You can you can change it based on what strength you want. But I'm going to do a gradient map because I want this to become a color map because I'm going to blend this with a color map. So now I have a black and white color map. And I can blend the color with this. Go ahead and blend. I don't know why I don't just drag and drop it from the, the quick bar menu up there, but oh well. Go ahead and do a blending mode multiply. And then drag that in. Wow, already it looks a lot better, right? And so we have the normal map, we have the color looking better, and that is the base premise of how I do this. I'm going to change this. I hate that, ugh, that ugly color. <laughs> okay, even though we're not going to be talking about coloring this thing, I, I just can't stand that, like, tapioca ugh, look. 
So here we have a much stronger outline. It's looking great. And then I'm going to use this to actually change the gradient map to kind of make it darker or lighter based on what you want. You could actually do this and change the color too, since it's a gradient map, and make it like a dark green to make it look kind of like moss has grown in the cracks or things of that nature. And so that's a very powerful uh, tool, that ambient occlusion. Now what I want to do is I hate how it's just all the same roughness. So I want to make these cracks not have any sheen at all, so 100% roughness. 100% roughness means I need this to be white, each of those cracks to be white. So I'm going to invert this, drag and drop that there, and you can see that I have that inverted. And I'm going to blend this with the base roughness. I want to do lighten. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, so I'm going to add a gradient map because I didn't get enough of the lightness to come through. Change that to grayscale. Change that up quite a bit. And now put that in. Okay, that's looking better. So that's 100% roughness. And you can see as we put that in, it just already starts to pop even more. These small things make a world of difference. So you can see that the tiles have their own sheen, but you can see the transition and it doesn't just all blur into one thing in your eyes. And you can play around with that. And you can play around with uh, the ambient occlusion on the color map too. If it's too dark, you can make it lighter. You can change the opacity of the blend, things like that. Now, the last thing I want to show you is kind of how I do these highlights on these tiles. So I go to curvature. I take it from the normal map, not the height. <laughs> Oops. So there we go. And you can see it starts to kind of do this, this cool outline on the, on the edges. I can change the intensity if I want. Going up too much is, is bad. But you can start to get some really cool things. And I can start to blend this to my roughness to get some highlights. I can blend it to my color to get some really cool, just a little bit more depth, some edge wear, things of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and add a gradient map. Let's see, this is actually not the workflow of choice. I'll show you how I normally do this. I'm just trying something else. So I only have this black with the white on top right there. I can kind of make the edges a little bit stronger. I'm going to overlay this with a blend. So blend. Put that on top. It, well, it doesn't really matter at this point. And I'm going to do overlay. Not overlay. Uh, going to do... Uh, you could just like scale it down. Let's go ahead and do add. Crank that up a bit. And you can see that it starts to kind of add at the edge. Again, that is the worst way to do it. Just, just add the curvature. Don't, don't worry with the gradient map. Just the curvature. Or we could, I guess, you do need the gradient because it's a color. So just don't move it. And then you can kind of play around with that. If I go to overlay, you can see it starts to add very subtle lightness there. Okay. But if you want the highlights to pop a little bit more, you could kind of like increase this, decrease this. And it gets a little bit better. Or you can go to the curvature map itself and change that. And so that's a really cool uh, trick that I do to just get a little bit more detail into my into my colors. So you can see that right there. Um, and so this tutorial is basically done. Again, we didn't go into the how to add moss, how to, how to add cool coloring and different things, because that's pretty easy. As you play around with that, you can kind of figure that out yourself. Uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll get access to this file, and it helps support the channel too. Um, but also consider following us on Facebook. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. I'm, I'm going to try and do a tutorial once a week this month. And then I'm also going to, going to be doing a video game review once a week this month as well. So this channel is going to be pretty active. Thank you so much for your support. Leave a comment below. Uh, is there anything that you learned from this? Uh, let me know. Is there anything I did wrong? Um, I love, I love YouTube because I get so many artists giving me feedback and I learn things from you guys as well. So if there's anything that I did way too hard and there's an easier way to do it, let me know in the comments below. I love that. And thank you again just for everything. I hope that your march is going well. I hope you don't have as much snow on the ground as we do here in Utah. And that you just have an awesome day. Thanks again. Bye.